Can a believer listen to worldly music? There have been many arguments and suggestions about the origins and influences of music. Some claim to listen to music for the catchy beat, while others claim to do so for the lyrics and say that it's not a big deal. After all, it's just a combination of sounds with some words thrown into it. But as for me, the Bible is the only reliable and trustworthy source that can reveal the real origin and influences of music. First and foremost, God Almighty invented music. It has always been important for God's people to worship God through songs, and this practice dates back to before the earth was created. Music is always made for worship. In addition, after we leave this world, we shall continue to sing songs of adoration to Christ for all of eternity. Lukewarm Christians have always found excuses for why they should be allowed to enjoy listening to worldly music. Yet by doing so, they're opposing the Lord's plan for their lives. Purity cannot originate from contaminated fountains. The Bible says in James 3, 11 to 12, does a spring of water bubble up with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Although there is no thou shall not in the Bible with reference to worldly music, we are aware that everything created in this world is wicked and evil. All types of music are just a collection of sounds that have been put together, but their use determines whether they are considered holy or wicked. Are most songs written nowadays ever glorifying God in their lyrics? In reality, there are many songs that promote immorality, vulgarity, hatred, and self-glorification. Since the Lord desires for us to live cleansed lives, can any of this bring you closer to Him? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, you cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and from the cup of demons too. You cannot eat at the Lord's table and at the table of demons too. What kind of sanctified believer would listen to music Music that glorifies sin and serves the devil. We have no business listening to anything if the source is not from heaven. Galatians 5.25 says, Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. If your standard for serving Christ is entertainment or something that stirs the flesh and emotions, then yes, you would compromise and love music that encourages early relationships, worldly heartbreaks, pride, breakups, and so on. But if your standard is letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly and worshiping God in spirit and in truth, then I believe that you would leave it all behind. The Bible says in James 4.4, 4, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. This is a serious accusation that is appropriate for someone who chooses to enjoy the joys of this world and not find joy from the arms of our pure and wonderful savior. People may say, it's just music. Why does it matter? Well, we have to understand that it matters. Why would you want to listen to something that discredits and degrades our Savior? Music is spiritual in nature because God created it. And as a result, it has an impact on a person's spirit, soul, and body. So the songs you listen to affect you emotionally and spiritually. We need to deeply recognize that music is not created for us, but for Him. So it's not about whether you like it, but it's about whether he likes it. The question should not be, do we enjoy the music, but does our father enjoy the music you are listening to? The Bible says in Colossians 3, 17, and whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. While it is true that we are free to pick what music we listen to, our souls will suffer if our choices do not honor Christ. Satan is aware that if he taints this magnificent gift, he can deprive God of his glory. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, So that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. When you sing worldly music, it affects us, and something in the spiritual realm happens. It's not just music. To divert people from the right path, Satan strives to mimic all that God made. The same applies to music. By leaving doors open, the enemy can hear all you say and make it come true. Every time you sing, talk about destruction, sadness, depression, and etc., the enemy will always take the chance to strike. It begins with just words, but it quickly transforms into your reality. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 says, Your boasting about this is terrible. Don't you realize that this sin is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough?
God wants us to see and hear things that do not include sinful behaviors. We are not to listen and enjoy anything that will corrupt our morals. Listening to such music or watching such material day after day will desensitize you to sin and you will find it easier to sin. So don't join that choir that praises the devil worldwide. Instead, join the choir of angels who praises the name of the Lord. Embrace the sweet atmosphere which comes through godly inspired music. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 54 your decrees have been the theme of my songs wherever i have lived